Mariupol, a city cut off from water, food and medical supplies for days now. They are surrounded by Russian troops and surviving with what little they have left. We're collecting water from roofs after it rains, this aid worker explains. And there is torment for residents who know help is on the other side of the invading forces. You have to divide between each other what is available. There is humanitarian aid, but it cannot be delivered now, this woman says. Humanitarian corridors have opened, but not soon enough for everyone. Tatiana Perebenos was trying to escape Irpin, north of Kyiv, during what was supposed to be a ceasefire. She was with her two children, her 18-year-old son Nikita and her daughter Elise, who was just nine. ITV News has spoken to a friend of the family. This is just heartbreaking. We just can't accept it. We cannot forgive it. And there are no words to describe the pain. After efforts to get thousands out of Sumi through a humanitarian corridor yesterday, there is hope more will be able to escape this way from other towns and cities today. On the outskirts of Kyiv, others are trying to flee too. Even the most vulnerable now see the challenge of leaving outweighs the risk of staying. In Miklayev, this hospital is busy with those injured by relentless Russian attacks. While a medical centre itself was the victim of bombing in Kharkiv. As the assault on cities across Ukraine continues, the West's response is tightening. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky thanked his American counterpart for banning the import of Russian oil. This video from the Russian Defence Ministry claims to show that their tanks, bearing the Soviet Union flag, continue to advance. But British intelligence suggests they are failing to break through near the capital. And Kyiv's resolve rang out this morning. The silence of the capital's empty streets filled with the defiance of the country's national anthem. Ellie Pitt, ITV News.